So we all believe Allah Ta'ala is Aziz. Dhu Izzah, he has honor and he has might. But also Hakimun, wisdom in that which is legislated. So it's not enough to believe that Allah Ta'ala is Aziz, he has Izzah. But you must also believe and implement Allah Ta'ala as what? Hakim. Meaning, you may believe Allah is Aziz, he will help you. His might, he has might. But you should also implement Allah Ta'ala is Hakim in that which is legislated. So even if you believe Allah Ta'ala is Aziz, but you're doing an action which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not legislated. This is not the way. You have to believe Allah ta'ala and implement is azizun, is mighty and is azizun. So not every single person that claims to fight jihad with the aqeed Allah is aziz, is doing it that Allah ta'ala is hakim. Because if Allah has not legislated it, it's not a jihad. Number two, that Allah ta'ala is hakim in that which is legislated in fighting the kuffar ma'al qudrah with ability with the ability to do so. And what we take from this ayah, like I said is, that victory is only from who? From Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Victory is only from who? From Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says in Surah Al-Anfal. إِنْ يَنْصُرْكُمُ اللَّهِ فَلَا غَالِبَ لَكُمْ If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He aids you, فَلَا غَالِبَ لَكُمْ Nobody could defeat you. وَإِنْ يَخْذُلْكُمْ فَمَنْ ذَا الَّذِي يَنْصُرُكُمْ مِنْ بَعْدِ And if Allah abandons you, who is going to aid you after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And as of the ayah end, وَعَلَى اللَّهِ فَلْيَتَوَكَّلِ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ And in Allah, the believers should put their trust. So if victory is only from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the trust should only be in who? In Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we look at the causes of victory, but the reality, لِلَّهِ الْأَمْرُ مِنْ قَبْلُ وَمِنْ بَعْدُ To Allah belongs the affair. In the beginning and the end. That Nasr, victory is only from who? From Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Therefore, our tawakkul, our reliance should be upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when we say our reliance should be in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it doesn't mean we don't take the necessary precautions, the necessary causes. We have to. Because in defining what is a tawakkul, reliance upon Allah, the ulama they say, a tawakkul sidqu i'timad Allah is to truly rely upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ma'al akhdil asbab and taking the necessary precautions at the same time. So in the beginning, an nasr the victory is only from who? From Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds them, Surah Al-Imran, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala nasarakum bi badr wa antum adhilla that Allah aided you in badr despite your small numbers. So what are the causes of victory? First thing is, we're going to look at the Battle of Badr in the order in which it happened. And when we look at the order and the events, we withdraw from it lessons that from the very beginning they were doing the causes or the things that will cause victory. So in the very beginning of the Battle of Badr, we mentioned that the purpose of this battle was for what? To go and raid the trade caravans of Abu Sufyan and the Quraysh. That was the purpose of the battle, nothing else. They did not go out for qital, they did not go out to fight. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when you go back to Surah al uh, Anfal, Allah ta'ala mentions this. That's why I'm always going to refer back to what? Surah Anfal. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِذْ يَعِيدُكُمُ اللَّهِ إِحْدَ طَائِفَتَيْنِ Allah ta'ala said, when Allah ta'ala promise you, إِحْدَ طَائِفَتَيْنِ You're going to get one or two things. And what are the one or two things? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِذْ يَعِيدُكُمُ اللَّهِ إِحْدَ طَائِفَتَيْنِ that when he promised you one or two things, one or two things will be for you. Either you get the trade caravan or either you defeat the army of the people of Makkah. One or two things. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَتَوَدُّونَ أَنَّ غَيْرَ ذَاتِ شَوْكَ لَكُمْ And you wished that that which you will get from the two things is what? غَيْرَ ذَاتِ شَوْكَ that which contained no fighting, get caravan. You didn't go out for fighting. You wished that you just get the caravan only. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He wanted amran liyuhiqqa Allahu haqqa bi kalimatihi wa yaqta'a adabir al kafirin. But Allah ta'ala intended something else, which is to prove the truth by His word and to cut off the roots of the kuffar in the battle of Badr. So they did not go out for fighting. There was only how many of them? 314 and two horses. 
So what lesson do we learn from this? The first lesson from this is that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when the issue turned to fighting at the Quraysh have left with all their forces, 1,300 men, what did the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam do? He said, Ayu an nas ashiru alayya. O people, give me your opinion. He consulted with the companions. So the first lesson we learn from this is what? The importance of shura, consultation. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is receiving wahi from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And before he asks them, give me your opinion, what had come to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam before that? What did he know before this? Anna Allah qad wa'adani ihda ta'ifatayn He knew already that Allah Ta'ala has promised me one or two things Either the caravan or victory from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala But yet, even those receiving wahi from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala Ashiru alayya He said, give me your opinions That's number one Then the companions, SubhanAllah Whatever opinion they gave to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Which is the second lesson In the conclusion, what did all the companions agree upon? They said to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam If you want us to go forward, we'll go forward We'll fight If you want us to go back to Medina, we'll go back to Medina So what lesson do we take from this? What lesson do we take from this? Although the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did shura with them In the end, the companion said, it's whatever you decide what lesson do we take from this? Now, Barakallah fi The submissiveness of the Sahaba to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam None of them said it doesn't make sense 1,300 against 300 Or oh, you're not an army, you're not a commander But rather, they submitted to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam That at the end of the day is whatever you have decided And this is an important lesson That in Islam we don't have the democracy rule, the majority. One person can veto everybody else. Based on what? Based on Quran and Sunnah. And even if he doesn't have Quran and Sunnah with him, if he's your emir or your leader, even if you think what he's saying doesn't make sense, so long as it doesn't contain the disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you have to obey him as your emir. But more importantly, if it's Quran and Sunnah, so we don't have the majority. And that's why Abdullah ibn Mas'ud used to say, al jamaa the true jama'ah, the true body of the Muslims is that which is according to the truth even if you're by yourself alone, even if you're one person, that is the truth. That is the truth. So we learn from this that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is sunnah, he overrides everything. So it be it the majority, be it a consensus, the Sahaba Rajallahu Anhum, they decided whatever the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has decided that is it. And this here is important to know. This is min a'adham asbab al nasr From the greatest causes of victory is what? Following the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Why is this from the greatest causes of victory? To follow the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Because it brings unity. Allah Ta'ala has ordered, وَاَعْتَسِمُ بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا Hold on to the rope of Allah together. And the rope of Allah is what? Al-Qur'an wa sunnah. It brings unity. Many of the times say the Ummah is disunited. We're not unified. There is no unity except upon Quran and Sunnah. Any other unity upon anything else will end in what? In disunity and it will end in defeat. So we learn from this the obedience of the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the opposite of unity will bring about what? Defeat. And that's why going back to Surah Al-Anfal again, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says what? وَأَطِيعُ الله. Subhanallah. This Surah Al-Anfal, Surah Al-Badr. وَأَطِيعُ الله وَرَسُولَهُ Obey Allah and His Messenger. In regards to the battle. Why? وَلَا تَنَازَعُوا Do not fall into disputes. What will happen if you fall into disputes? فَتَفْشَلُوا You'll be defeated. You lose your courage. وَتَذْهَبُ رِيْحُكُمْ And you lose your strength completely. You lose your strength completely. This is the result of first and foremost against what? Going against the sunnah. Leads to disunity. Disunity, you lose your courage. You lose your strength. So if we want victory for this ummah, we must call to unity of the ummah. Upon what? Upon the book of Allah and the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If we're sincere about this victory. Allah Ta'ala said, وَتَذْهَبُ رِيْحُكُمْ and you lose your strength because that you, disunity will, lose to, will lead to defeat. United we stand, divided we fall. 
So we take from that as well the importance of unity upon the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Secondly, after they all said now, the Sahaba radiallahu anhu, whatever you decided, from the Ansar was Miqdad ibn Aws. He said to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, despite their small number, Ya Rasulullah, la naqulu laka kama qala banu Israel li Musa. O Messenger of Allah, we're never going to say to you, we will never say to you, as Bani Israel, they said to Musa, if have anta, go you and your Lord, faqatila, go and fight. Rather we say to you, go you and your Lord, fight, inna ma'akum muqatilun. Uh, we are with you, fighting with you. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, after that, he says, ashiru alayya you and nas. Give me your opinions. And we said the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam kept asking, wanted the Ansar to give him the answer. Because their covenant to the Prophet ﷺ was to help him or to defend him if Medina was attacked. But they're outside Medina now. But the Ansar, they also sacrificed. And said, we'll go forth with you, O Messenger of Allah. The lesson we take from this is the tadhiyah, the sacrifice of the companions of the Prophet ﷺ. The absolute tadhiyah, the sacrifice of the companions of the Prophet ﷺ. Now, after this now, after they decided to go forth, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa knowing they were going to go into battle, what was the first thing the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa did? For those who came to the lesson. After he knew they were going to go into the battle, what's the first thing the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa did? Barakallahu fiqh, ad-du'a. That from the greatest causes of victory from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is du'a. And not just in the beginning, in the middle of the battle, every single stage of the battle is what? Ad-du'a. So if we want victory for this ummah and we see what is happening around the world, one of the best things we could do is dua. This is better than doing things which are contrary to the sunnah, spreading WhatsApp messages that China, for example, imprisoned so many Muslims or laid a siege on them. And Allah's tried them by keeping, I don't know how many millions now, on the what? What's happened to the millions of Chinese? Warranty. Quarantine, I'm sorry, under quarantine. Number one is against the Sunnah. From the way of the Prophet, وسلم, you shouldn't do shamata to a'da. You shouldn't rejoice about the misfortune that befalls even your enemies. First and foremost, your brother. The Prophet وسلم, said, Whoever rejoices at the misfortune of his brother, Allah Ta'ala will test him with the same thing. You shouldn't rejoice at the misfortune of your brother. As for the enemies, Ibn Taymiyyah, Rahimallah Ta'ala, one of the greatest enemies to him, a subki. He made takfir, said Ibn Taymiyyah is not a Muslim. He ordered for Ibn Taymiyyah to be killed, to be imprisoned. When he passed away, one of the students, Ibn Taymiyyah, he came to him and he said, I give you glad tidings, your enemy subki has passed away. Ibn Taymiyyah became angry. He said, you want me to be happy, even though it's an adversary to him. At the death of a Muslim, Ibn Taymiyyah went to his house and he said to his children, I now am like your father. I'm assuming the position of your father. Whatever he used to do for you, I'm going to do it from now on. And that was his enemy. But rather the sunnah is to say, Alhamdulillah, afani, all praise be to Allah, who has saved me from that which he's tested them with and preferred me to much of his creation. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the first thing he did in the beginning of the battle was a dua So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when the, when the battle, he began, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Hadi Quraysh qad aqbalat bi khuyalaiha wa fakhriha. Oh Allah, this is Quraysh. They've come forth with their pride and their arrogance. And they deny you and they deny your Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And they ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allahumma wa uh, nasruka alladhi wa'attani, the victory which you've promised me. When the battle began, what did the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam do again? A dua. To a point that he raised his hand so high that the upper garment of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would fall down and Abu Bakr would pick it up and put it up until he felt sorry for the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. As he was calling upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying, Allahumma in tahlak, hadhi al-isaba, al-yawm la tu'ubad ba'da al-yawm abada. If this small group of people become destroyed today, the Sahaba, you will not be worshipped upon the face of the earth after this. Subhanallah. This shows the status of the Sahaba. Radiallahu ta'ala anhum. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the midst of the ma'araka was a dua. Likewise, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam at the end of the ma'araka, the battle was dua. 
And that's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Anfal. If تَسْتَغِيثُونَ رَبَّكُمْ فَاسْتَجَابَ لَكُمْ When you sought deliverance from your Lord, فَاسْتَجَابَ لَكُمْ And he answered your prayer. أَنِّي مُمِدُّكُمْ بِأَلْفٍ مِنَ الْمَلَائِكَةِ مُرْدِفِينَ that I'm going to assist you with a thousand angels in succession, one after the other. So what we learn from the Battle of Badr, ahmiyatul dua, the importance of dua. Another lesson we learn from Badr, when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he saw the angels descending and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what did he do? Did he just step back or he went into the midst of the battle? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam himself led the battle. The great leadership of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And not leadership or sacrifice only in terms of himself, but rather even his family. When the duel took place, who did the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam put forth? All his family. And who were they? Hamza, Ali, and I knew you forget the third one. Who was the third? Ubaid ibn al-Harith. Ubaid ibn al-Harith. Also, from the lessons we learn from the Battle of Badr, is this. That any battle, any war has to have a shi'ar. It has to have a what? A slogan. It has to be for a cause. And that's why the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he was asked, who is the one truly fighting in the path of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, the one fighting the path of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is the one that's fighting for what reason? لِتَكُونُ كَلِمَةُ اللَّهِ الْعُلِيَا That Allah's word is the utmost. Not for the sake of land. Not for the sake of nationality. Not for the sake of any partisanship, but rather for the sake of a what? Sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Yawmul Badr, the day of Badr, what was the shi'ar? What was the slogan of the Muslims on the day of Badr? When they were going forth, what were the Muslims saying? Were they making nationalistic or partisanship or tribal slogans? What was the shi'ar of the Muslim Yawmul Badr? The shi'ar of the Muslim Yawmul Badr was the shi'ar, the same slogan of Bilal radiallahu anhu when he was being tortured. In the battle of Badr as they're going forth, the Muslims, what they kept shouting was, Ahadun, 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 Ahadun. That this fight, fi sabili tawheed, is on the path of tawheed, in the path of aqeedah, nothing else. That is for tawheed, the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So for victory from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that cause has to be for what? Fi sabilillah, in the path of Tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's why we said Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He called the day of Badr, the day of what? Al Furqan, the day of criteria. Criteria bayn al haqqi wal batil. Criteria between truth and falsehood. And that Tawheed is also manifested in our actions. How is it manifested in our actions? True? Because we said uh, uh, Yawm Furqan was a day of criteria or differentiation between truth, falsehood, tawheed and shirk. And what else? Why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala call that day the day of Furqan? What other reasons do we give? What happened on that day? What two things were separated on that day? I will not ask Abu Hanif, he was not here. Ya Mus'ab. Ya Mus'ab. Ya Mus'ab MashaAllah Ya Abdullah, help you brother We mentioned Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called the day of Furqan Why? And understanding one of the reasons called the day of Furqan Also understand how we could gain victory from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala What other things were separated? Shirk, Kufr, Shirk, Afwan, uh, Tawheed, Shirk Iman, Kufr, Haq, Batil. What other two things became, what other thing became separated on that day? Two things. Ya Salman. Ya Abba Salman. Huh? Right versus wrong. What other thing that became separated on that day? Allah Ta'ala called Yawm Furqan, the day of separation. It cut off all ties of kinship. Divided kinship And that thing which is a manifestation of your tawheed When you say la ilaha illallah Because Allah Ta'ala said to the Prophet Muzammil or Mudathir with what? Qum fa'andhir 
وربك ف... وربك فكبر فكبر والرجز فهجر we said this is the order of what الولاء والبراء loyalty disloyalty allegiance disallegiance for what the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that a person's tawhid is oneness in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not upright until he has al-wala, loyalty to Allah, the Prophet and the believers and disloyalty to disbelief and the disbelievers. So in the battle of Badr, one thing we learned that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala truly gave them victory was this al-wala wal-bara. How does al-wala wal-bara give you victory? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, لا تجد قوما يؤمنون بالله واليوم الآخر يوادون من حاد الله ورسوله you will never ever, this is from Allah Ta'ala Creator, find the people who believe in Allah and the last day, loving those who are in opposition to Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, no matter who they may be. And then at the end of the ayah, how does the ayah end, Ya Abdullah? Ula'ika hizbu, hizbu Allah. Ala inna hizbu Allah humul, humul muflihun. This is the party of Allah, very the party of Allah, the successful one. In this battle of Badr, we saw Al-Wala Wal-Bara. So in the battle of Badr, we saw, for example, one of the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, such as Abu Ubaidah ibn Utbah ibn Rabi'ah. Abu Ubaidah ibn Utbah ibn Rabi'ah was fighting against Utbah. Ibn Rabi'ah. And who's Utbah ibn Rabi'ah? His father. Also, against Walid ibn Utbah. Who's Ut Walid ibn Utbah? His brother. And also against Shayba. And who's Shayba? His uncle. And in the beginning of the Battle of Badr, if you remember, these are the three people that took part in the what? The duel. They were all killed immediately. His father, his brother, his uncle. Immediately. Without any remorse from the Sahaba radiallahu anhu. Why? Because Yomul Furqan, this is the day lineage is broken. You're on the side of Tawheed, on the side of Shirk. Secondly, we had Abu Bakr as Siddiq radiallahu anhu. And in the battle was Abdurrahman ibn Abi Bakr, his son. That his son said to him, Father, I saw you in the battle. If I wanted to, I could have killed you. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. Subhanallah, and we know the fitna of children. He said to his son, if I had seen you, I would have killed you. Subhanallah, his own son. This is day of Furqan. In the battle, we had Mus'ab ibn Umair and Abu Aziz ibn Umair. Who's Abu Aziz ibn Umair? Huh? Sorry? We're giving clues here, you know, all the time. <laughs> if I say Abu Aziz ibn Umair, who is he? Ya Abdullah. His brother. Huh? Sorry, I didn't hear. His brother. Tayyib. So Mus'ab ibn Umair, in this battle, his brother was captured as a prisoner. And Mus'ab said to one of the Ansar, one of the Ansar, should Yadak tie him tightly. For inna ummahu mata. For verily, his mother is a very rich woman. So you charge a high ransom for him. Abu Aziz was shocked. He said to Musa ibn Umair, Ya Akhi, hadha wasiyyatuka bi? Subhanallah, my brother, this is the only advice you give this man concerning me. He said, he is, you're not my brother, he is my brother. To the Ansar. Subhanallah. So this was a day of Furqan. So again, al-wala'u wal-bara. Unity upon the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the strongest bond. When you have that unity, that bond is not broken. Any other unity is a weak form of unity. It's the one that cements the people. And that's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In Surah Al-Anfal again. That وَأَلَّفَ بَيْنَ قُلُوبِهِمْ That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He joined between their, between their hearts. Allah ta'ala said to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. لَوْ أَنْفَقْتَ مَا فِي الْأَرْضِ جَمِيعًا مَا أَلَّفْتَ بَيْنَ قُلُوبِهِمْ if you spent everything upon the face of the earth, you spent everything, you exhausted everything, as people are trying to do today in the name of compromise and bring people together. If you spent everything on the face of the earth, you would never have joined their hearts. Allah is the one that joined their hearts. So one important lesson again is unity upon the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
and the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Another lesson we took from the Battle of Badr. We said the Shaytan he also took part in this battle. So what lesson, Ya Luqman, do we take from the participation of Shaytan in this battle? Now. That the shaitan, he arouses, he encourages disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But when you fall into it, what does he do? He leaves you. So when you push them as far as he could push them, when the reality happened, the shaitan says, he left them. Inni Allah. I fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Also, the actions of the munafiqeen. Allah ta'ala says, إِذْ يَقُولُ الْمُنَافِقُونَ وَالَّذِينَ فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ مَرَضٍ غَرَّ أُولَاهِ دِينُهُمْ وَمَنْ يَتَوَكَّ عَلَى اللَّهِ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ عَزِيزٌ حَكِيمٌ That the munafiqeen in all places and all time, they're always plotting against the deen and the people of Islam and they will make mockery of the believers in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The munafiqeen will make you mockery that these people, they've been like deceived by their religion. They think they're going to win this battle. But the believers in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they understand there is causes, physical causes. But ultimately, the, the victory is of who? From who? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that goes back even to the issue of this issue of this virus that's going around. There's causes of spread of virus. So the believer in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you have to be cautious. But there's a difference between being cautious and being fearful. Because extreme fear is in itself an illness. So you have people doing this virus right now, they will not go for Salatul Jama'ah, this Corona. Seriously, I remember when I lived in Saudi, there were some of my students, maybe the age of Salman or a bit younger, they've never ever been to the Kaaba and went in Jeddah, 45 minutes drive. Because people cough, people sneeze, you know, there's adwa, diseases passing around, and so on and so forth. So the ultimate thing to know the victory from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So these are the lessons we take from uh, Ghazwatul Badr. If anybody has some additions, please add insha'Allah ta'ala. Next week we go to Ayatul Siyam, the verse of fasting. Subhanakallah bihamdika shadwan la ilaha.